welcome back. In this segment, I get to meet Sarah Itani, a young Muslim woman who's an executive member of the Harley Owners Group in Calgary. In the heart of the Canadian Badlands is Drumheller, runner-up community in Canada's most rider-friendly community contest 2017. We invite you to come experience the hospitality, drink in the views of one of Canada's most unique and haunting landscapes, Drumheller, Alberta. The Spark Business Incubator is located in 214 Place and run by Community Futures Grand Prairie and Region. It can provide a new or expanding business with the supports to be successful. www.gpsparkincubator.ca I'm being joined by a young lady named Sarah. So I'm actually part of the Harley Owners Group uh, chapter. Um, I work in a very corporate financial field, but this is a group of people that I get to ride with and meet with a couple times a month for different events and different functions that we do. Um, and recently just joined the executive board, so that's what we're out here today uh, promoting and, and engaging with. And do you, as a Muslim woman, find that people are very accepting of you wearing your hijab, being out on these rides? They really have been. I think I, um, I was worried when I went into it. I, I walked into a group of very stereotypical bikers um, and I didn't know what to expect and it's been one of the warmest, uh, most inviting, most supportive communities and I, um, I feel really lucky for that. And how old are you? I'm 27. Okay, so I know a lot of people don't like the stereotype, the word millennial, sure. but that's what you are. That's your generation, yep. right? Yep. So what we're trying to do is find out a little bit about the future of motorcycling. Your generation is the immediate future, and then we've got the little ones that are the long-range future. Sure. So tell me from, number one, a female rider's mm -hmm. perspective, someone who is a Muslim, yep. and someone who is fairly young, yep. what do you think? think the future of motorcycling is going to look like? It's a good question. I think the future of motorcycling is a community that's really diverse, um, but that comes together over their shared interest of wanting to get out, wanting to explore, wanting to be adventurous. Um, I think in a time where think people are really polarized um, because of politics, because of different identities and what have you, here's a really cool place for us to get together and share a common interest and a common hobby. So I think the future is looking really cool and um, exciting. I think it is. I think it's very different. I remember in the 80s when I was new to motorcycling. Um, it was empowering. I remember the first time that I got on that motorcycle all by myself, nobody riding with me, nobody telling me what to do, and getting off at the end of about a hundred kilometer ride going, mm, I just accomplished that. Is that how you feel? Oh, totally. My whole life, I've been the kind of person that doesn't like people, doesn't let people define me or tell me I can't do something. Um, when everybody asked me why did I start riding, it was because people said, oh, no, come on, you can't. You're female, you're Muslim, you're little, like whatever it was. There was a million excuses, and I've never let that define me. So I think a lot of women, even though we never really talked to each other back in the 80s, I don't think women... I don't think women were real and honest with each other in their dialogue back in the 80s, the 70s, the 60s, when my mom was a young woman. I think that we were so closed up and so cloistered mm -hmm. that we didn't find out that you have the same fear I have, you have the same oh. joys, the same desires, right? So I think this is kind of a unique opportunity for us as um, older generation, younger generation, to be able to find that opportunity to have those discussions. Because I think if I can tell you that one of my biggest fears riding a motorcycle is riding in the hail, right? And you have experienced riding in the hail, you're going to understand where I'm coming from. 
percent. Right. I think I found in a lot of women that ride or are learning to ride in our community, the men are so vocal about being fearless and you know not caring and not worrying. A lot of I see that there's less women that are riding because we we feel like we can't talk about being scared. It's okay to be scared, but that makes you a better rider. And so I think the more we talk about that, the more women get on bikes and feel like you don't have to be fear to be brave right you just have to be willing and and open it's um the more we dialogue the more we talk the stronger we get i definitely think you have one of those scary moments and if you don't know what to do in that moment you can be turned off and just want to leave whereas if you've had the conversation hey i remember renee told me this is what i should do and i react quicker and then i'm not as scared because it's it's a near miss it's not a total miss and i'm ready to come back the next day and ride again right yeah and you feel um Education, knowledge is power, right? And ignorance is what causes fear. Whether it's ignorance of what you wear and how you portray yourself as a Muslim woman, or it's ignorance and fear of the clothes we wear when we ride, right? right? Because we have a lot of that kind of... I think that's one of the reasons, and tell me if I'm wrong or right, but my perspective, mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons why the motorcycle community accepts so many people from every race and culture out there yeah. with open arms yeah. is because we know what it's like to be discriminated against on a daily basis. 100%. Oh, I completely agree. It, it, just as much as I maybe get a negative stereotype because of my veil, a biker in his full gear will get the same kind of negative attention. So we've bonded, I've bonded with, with a whole bunch of people in my group over things like that, right? Of, of We're here to accept you because we know what it's like to be looked down on. We don't want to, to portray that same kind of negative stereotype. So, no, I totally agree. So you see, folks, the beautiful thing about the motorcycle community, the thing that drew me to it 40 years ago, the thing that keeps me part of it today is the inclusiveness. I could not have said it better myself. So there you go, the future of motorcycling. The future of motorcycling is young women being empowered, feeling strong, talking to older women, getting educated, wearing good gear, being safe on their motorcycle, and passing that on to their children. One day, in good time, most definitely. One day, all in good time, her baby will also ride a motorcycle or at least be given the opportunity to, exposed to it. And that's how we keep our industry healthy. We have to invite our children to come experience what it is we love about this sport. Yeah. Thank you so much for this opportunity and this great platform. I'm uh, excited to see what the next, why next 40 years in riding will bring. Yes, and if I'm still around, I'll probably be a rocking chair somewhere out on a porch somewhere. <laughs> I'm hoping to be watching you someday in my position talking about the future of motorcycling. I hope so too. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Sarah. On the Alberta Saskatchewan border is a welcoming city that was recently crowned as Canada's most rider friendly community of 2017, Lloyd Minster. From rider friendly businesses to great events, Lloyd Minster, Canada's most rider friendly community, come experience it. The Spark Business Incubator is located in 214 Place and run by Community Futures Grand Prairie and Region. It can provide a new or expanding business with the supports to be successful. www.gpsparkincubator.ca That's all our time for this week, folks. Join me next week as I interview more interesting young people to discover the future of motorcycling.